We're back, Star Talk Sports Edition. We're talking about the Olympics. And I love thinking, talking about sports and the physics of sports. And however good I am at that, Charles Liu is better. And that's why we've got Charles <laughs> Liu on the show. Charles, always good to have you. Oh, pleasure. Thank and you so much. Just thanks over all these years for being such a good friend of Star Talk. Because when it has been my pleasure. When the going gets tough, we call Charles. <laughs> <laughs> And, and it is my pleasure. Thank you. And I don't think you did any professional sports. We have Gary who gives Not us street cred here. No. Uh, mm -hmm. Street cred Gary. And, and yeah, we only right. I, I only just learned in this episode the man threw the javelin and the discus. So go for yep. Gary there. Mm -hmm. All right. And 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 uh, Chuck Chuck Nice what what sports have you done? With it? Um well um, there's um there's something called the dignity throw that <laughs> <laughs> where I received several several gold medals in the how dignity far can throw. You cast yeah. your dignity away how, from your right exactly <laughs> you know. <laughs> so as many people know, I wrestled. I uh, I wrestled in high school. I was captain of the team and undefeated. Wrestled in college, a little bit of graduate school. But when I got to college. Uh, after an undefeated record in high school, it was like a whole other, whole nother, nother, mm -hmm. uh, because I started wrestling people who would like th these were like farm boys, okay, <laughs> from the That's Midwest. It. There you That's go. All, that, there wow. you go. That's it. That's right. I don't That's know like, what what they'd right. be carrying around, with logs around the cabin. You know, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> whatever is the stereotype of the farm boy. I, that's who I was wrestling. And so and these and these are regions of the country that have where wrestling is very serious. They fill arenas, and yeah. so I was delighted to not be the best because when you're the best, how, what is your, how do you learn? What do you do? And so, so I had a losing record for most of my time in college, but that didn't matter. It was my favorite sport then and it continues to be. Wow. So, you so, know. and we, that was intercollegiate uh, wrestling, obviously not professional wrestling. Okay. <laughs> and uh, international rules are a little more strict than what we do just uh, intercollegiate here in the United States. Mm -hmm. And in the Olympics, there's freestyle and Greco-Roman. So that's right. what that's what we have going on. So what, what is freestyle? No. Well, so uh, it's easier to know what freestyle is once I tell you what Greco-Roman is. So Greco-Roman wrestling is just your upper body. So you can't. Sweep the leg. No, you can't do that. <laughs> you can't. You can't use your leg for anything. Wow. It is just your upper body strength, your arms, you know, your uh, and 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 the rest. So you they you you have people who tend to be very good at body throws. Right. right? You try to get a grip of their upper torso, and you're maneuvering for a position, and and ideally you'll execute a body throw where the throw includes getting their back to the mat. And then it's one smooth motion. And so those guys tend to have spindly legs and huge torsos. But- uh, Now, what, I, what, is, what is a passivity point in Greco-Roman? Oh, recipe? oh yeah. So what happened, and I don't know when that came in, but what happened was, the, it, in both uh, a freestyle and in, in Greco-Roman, they started putting in rules to speed up the game, okay? And to force you to always be attacking. And, and because you used to sort of jockey for position and feel the person out and minutes would go by and nothing would happen. All right. And so since Olympics still, they have to make money with their TV rights. I don't know if money did it or just the fan interest or whatever, but they started, co it started costing you if you were not perceived by the referee as always trying to be an aggressor. And if you're always just being the, on the receiving end and not the delivering end, that can cost you on both sides, okay? And so, I mean, sorry, both branches of the sport. So that sped up the game. In fact, there's, and I forgot the exact conditions under which this is true, but if you are tied at the end in points, because you get points on a takedown and, and if your back is exposed to the mat, there are various ways you, you earn points. If you're tied, they will start the next round with each of you already being granted a grip around the other person's torso. You, you already have a grip around them. This is like that new rule in baseball where in extra innings, they start the inning with a runner on second base, okay? Wow. Every, did, you, did you know about this? This is a new rule. I didn't I'm looking even at know it. this. It's called the ghost no. runner. It's called the ghost runner, all right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And so they start off the inning 
Yeah, you get a free base runner on second base. And you know who that runner is? It's the person who made the last out in the previous <laughs> inning, okay? Right. So, so or, the, or the last at bat person. Right. So, <clears throat> so it's an attempt to speed the game up and, and to, mm-hmm. to, to put more action in the sport. So, Neil, is there an ultimate wrestling move? I mean, so if we're watching the Olympics and the wrestling comes on, we've got to be thinking, do this. And then we can all shout at the TV. And yeah, the yeah. It is. <laughs> I would say... Now, th- now before you, know, you answer that question, before yeah. you answer that question, Neil, uh, I recall you telling me some years ago about a move that you did in high school, which was essentially undefeatable. There was no defense against it. It was like the crane technique in the karate kid. So maybe that, <laughs> you, want, you want to bring that up with the us. Cra- the karate kid crane. <laughs> yeah. I just remember you telling me this this method where, where you were able to immobilize your opponents against which they had no defense. Oh, wow. Uh, I'm trying to remember what that might have been because I, I had a few moves where if I can get that grip, then that, that's the end. If, 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 so the challenge is can you execute the grip before mm. you then complete the move? Because the grip... Uh, immobilizes your opponent in such a way. Now you can do with them what you wish. And if you're if you're quick enough and you get them slightly off balance, you take them to the mat. And the takedown move is is included. The the pin is part of the takedown move. And so, but I, I can tell you this: people are very nimble and they're very strong and they're very so. You don't tend to see that. But here's a move where if you see it executed. Basically, the, the match is going to be over within five seconds, okay? Wow. And it's called the cradle. I'd have mm-hmm. to say, if I were voting, I'd, I'd be curious what fellow wrestlers, if they had a different vote on this uh, from what I'm telling you here. The cradle is where one of my arms wraps, you're facing me, mm-hmm. you're perpendicular to me on the mat. One of my arms is under your head, like I'm just cradling you, like you're cradling a baby, right? My other arm goes under the knee of either one of your legs. It doesn't matter. It, it won't matter. And so now you're, I bring that knee up to your chin Ooh. and then lock my arms. Oh. Okay? Mm. So oh. now now I have you. I'm sorry. There's, what are you going to do? Where are you going to, what are you, where, where yeah. are you going to go? And I'm once gonna, I have gonna, that... If I can get that in any way, I just have to roll, roll back. Roll over. Roll yeah. back and you I will roll your shoulder blades down to the mat and then the, the referee's there watching it and then I love this sound where they they slam the I'll do it on the table here. There it is. They slam and that's and that's it. And if you watch someone get into a cradle, the generally they're not coming out of it and that's the end of the match. So you you, you just watch for that move. Wow. It's it's almost once once it's once you have the grip, it's you can't it's kind of over. Mm. Now you can try to kick out of it, okay? Yeah. You can try to kick. Um so you bring one other foot to 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 scissor lock your two ankles and just try to kick out of it. But if I'm I, now consider just the, just to see what how 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 many muscles are involved in this. My entire chest Okay, my deltoids, my biceps, all of my upper body strength is now has you enclosed in this cradle move. So it is one of the most effective invocations of muscle strength of any move there is. And do you do you do you trash talk at that point when you got him in the cradle? <laughs> I mean, you you pretty much know that it's over. I mean, do you just go, how do you like that, you little baby? That guy's in the cradle. That guy, yeah. Daddy's home, you little baby. Huh? Where, where's your mommy? Where's your mommy now? Yeah, where's your rattle in your Where's your, your rattle? Your I, got you, I got you in the cradle. Huh? Oh, Chuck. Chuck, 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 this is the Olympics. This is not the World Wrestling Federation. That's a different dynamic, right? Charles, you think that's going to stop Chuck? <laughs> wow. I mean, you take the cradle, bring him up a little bit, and then do the atomic knee drop. See, now there. <laughs> oh, the atomic knee drop uh, or the back yeah. breaking, whatever. That's a different sport, I think. Right. Yeah, we'll call right. that. Uh, but the cradle is um, so there, if you can get someone in a cradle where you're not already down on the mat, you know, if you're just sort of locking up and you're, you're twisting and turning, you can, I can get you in a cradle, even though it looks like my back is towards the mat. And all I have to do is just keep rotating around, and you you can't stand. You can, there's nothing you can do, and your hands are just useless 
at that point. You can try to push me away, right. but you've got no leverage. You got nothing. And, so, and by the way, I haven't checked this year, but women's wrestling is rapidly growing in popularity in the United mm -hmm. States. Yeah. And, you know, this is such a sort of a male, masculine, testosterone thing that I was initially skeptical. I say, we really, is this going to work? And then I watched some matches like, oh my gosh, bring it on, bring it on. Yeah, and so yeah. it was, it was <laughs> really, it was delighted to see it. And another very important thing about wrestling, and now that it's, you know, uh, it's got uh, can I say this? Both genders, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's got it, the full gender spectrum is represented. The the what's true also about wrestling is that it's you do it in different weight categories, mm. right? So no matter your weight, there's a category you can compete in, and it's not. Well, I've never been tall enough to do this, and I'm not strong enough to do that. The, in wrestling, you are matched up pound for pound. Yeah, and, and, that, and that actually is a point that leads perfectly to the question I have for you, Neil, about that, and that is how much weight makes a difference. In other words, the weight classes, if you're like at the bottom of a weight class compared to the top of the oh, weight no, class. Oh, no, you always be, you always want the top of the weight class. You want the top of the yes. weight class at yes. all times, right? All like, times. What is the difference? I mean, one of these days I'll tell you about uh, uh, the one time that I had glory on the wrestling mat back in high school, and but that's a different story. I, I was underweight the other guy by at least 25 pounds, and and I still wipe the floor with him. Uh, but but the question be, uh, the question becomes wait wait does Charles that's the first time matter? I've ever heard you use the phrase I wipe the floor with him. This is like the last sentence I ever thought would ever come out of your mouth. <laughs> okay. we're, we're obviously a bad influence on Charles. <laughs> I didn't taunt the dude, but it's true. Uh, but that's a story for another time. But my point is, like at what like, how much does it matter? Can an excellent technique defeat a heavier opponent? It's not right likely. Uh, here's my point. Um, if you weigh less, you can defeat someone heavier than you if, there's, if they're not as good a wrestler. But if they're just as good as a wrestler as you, you will simply lose. Wow. Here's my point. You generally, as you get bigger, you get slower. Okay. One advantage I had was I was I had very fast reflexes and yeah. I had very long arms. So I would use moves that would exploit m those two facts. Okay. Um, but I was always taller than my opponent. All right. Mm -hmm. And, but we're exactly the same weight. Well, if we, if we are the same weight and I'm taller and neither of us have body fat, my opponent is stronger than I am. That is, the, that is the definition of muscle strength, okay? The cross-sectional area of your muscle directly correlates with your strength. So if you are shorter, your muscles are bigger than mine because we weigh the same. I have to know that in advance to maneuver around their strong points to do things that might be quicker than they are or overreach or, or be able to reach farther than they can. So that's an important fact. So I would claim, Charles, that the person who's 25 pounds heavier than you was simply not as talented as you. Because if he, if he were, he'd be stronger than you in every way and have all of your moves and there'd be nothing you could do on him. Nice. That's all I'm saying. And Good. if you want someone smaller to kick someone, they'll, they'll ex execute some different kind of rules that are not the rules that the heavier person is, is a participant in. So if you're good at like Taekwondo and you can, and you half the weight of the other person, you go kick him in the throat. Okay. Yeah. That's a David and Goliath scenario. Right. Mm -hmm. But I bet you if Goliath had a sling the way David had a sling, Goliath would have <laughs> taken out David. Okay. There you go. So we're not talking about lightweight talent versus heavyweight, no talent here. We're talking about everybody with talent. Okay. So, so weight is the defining difference given equal talent. Given equal talent. That's why you got to match up the weights. It's a little bit of what the wrestling universe is all about. I'm delighted to help bring that to you. Neil deGrasse Tyson here, as always. Keep looking up.